Hello everyone, I'm George from Ireland. So I'm going to uh, give you a brief explanation of the Eton Wall game. Here I am at Eton, and behind me is Nine Arch Bridge. As you may see, it's only got three arches. But with the delightful Etonian illogic, it's still called Nine Arch Bridge after the bridge we used to stand in this spot, which was destroyed by a spate well over two centuries ago. Anyway, so this one replaced it. And um, it's only after that, that that the war game started. I don't remember the exact year, but it's um, around about 1800. Because, as I say, I make a point of never looking things up right before I do videos. Yes, I have read about the topics I make videos on. I wasn't born knowing this stuff, but it would be a bit of a cheat to swat up at it minutes before I start holding forth. So we're about to come on to um, uh, um, uh, College Field at Eton. So then you can behind me see some of the main buildings of Eton College. You can see the chapel, the very tall building behind. I've been onto the roof of it years ago and you uh, um, are afforded a most magnificent panorama of the Thames Valley because it's the, it's the tallest thing for miles around. Well, maybe some bits of Windsor Castle might be, might be taller. That's about two miles away. Apart from that, it must be the tallest thing within 10 miles in any direction. Um, uh, anyhow, so here you see uh, the, where the wall is, and actually this tree, bizarrely, is uh, one of the goals. You see um, this white line here that's painted on. You've got to score below that, but I'll, I'll come on to that. So um, uh, the, 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 the teams, well, they have many matches in the year, but the main one is St Andrew's Day, as in 30th of November. College play the Oppidans. College are the King Scholars. These boys have put KS at the end of their name, and you can see some of their house there. So College is the original house for the 70 poor scholars that uh, um, King Henry VI established in 1440. Later, other boys came to take the lessons. They lived in the town as an Oppidum in Latin, and so they became known as Oppidans, those who were not King Scholars. So the great majority of boys are oppidants. I was one, okay, um, as opposed to king scholars. So 70 king scholars and about 1,200 uh, oppidants. And so they select teams of um, 11 each and play against each other. Now oppidants having far more to choose from, you think would um, uh, win because they got more brawn than brain and we quite often do, quite often there's a draw. There are a few other matches in the year, but, but St Andrew's Day is the main match. Um, anyway, so this is calcs and the team approaching from this side is called slough because slough was that away the team approaching from that side is called eton so that the umpire will call them eton or slough not uh, not college or not the oppidans or their various other groups like chamber wall or i can't think mixed wall will be playing as in a mixed wall as is in some players from college some some players are oppidans um long chamber the, the boys um in college that's the king scholars house years ago well centuries ago they had a very long dormitory called long chamber for the first two or was it three years and so sometimes there's a there's a wall game team for boys in the first two or three years in college and they're called long chamber even though the physical long chamber no longer exists okay so um and you see that that low white line on the wall that's like the end of the pitch as it were now this 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 uh, white, white line all the way up and down is the beginning of calx, as in meaning chalk in Latin, because it was written, it was drawn in chalk. This is called bad calx, because there's no wall at the end. The other end is called good calx. Obviously, they swap over halfway. So it, we're inside um, the um, furrow now, where you can't see it, but it's been about five meters wide. But they would paint a a, a um, line along the grass. You can see how the grass is a little bit different here. But um, let me show you where they start. So Slough Road is the other side of this wall, as in you go that way up to Slough. And so the rest of it is a football field for some of the year, or there's, there's, there's the field game, properly called football as played upon the field at Eton. But that's this uh, curious un game unique to Eton, um, a bizarre amalgam of rugger and football. Uh, and no wonder it hasn't caught on anywhere with these very small goals. And they had a bully as in kind of a scrum thing. And there were ways we had to ram the ball into people and charge at people. But you know, the rules have been changed for health and safety reasons a little bit. Um, anyway, so this is where the pitch starts. You can see these um, uh, brown metal things up on the wall. That's called the ladder, begins under the ladder. Um, I'm not sure why they've left those things there. But on the other side of that, there really um, is a ladder. So they can they climb up and they jump over. So St Andrew's Day morning, um, college wall, they wear purple and white. They link arms and in traditional fashion, they, they come out around from there, around here, okay? And then they, they head towards wherever their position is, whether they're beginning Eton or Slough, probably toss the coin to decide. Whereas, whereas beyond Slough Road is six pennies, um, which, or the field, that's where the field game began. Um, and and uh, so the, the uh, opponent wall they meet there, and they're wearing um, orange and purple stripes, and they psych themselves up, and they run through the streets in pairs, two by two, chanting, oi, 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 
boy and they get to the other side and they shout something and they throw their caps these old style schoolboy caps over the wall and they climb on top of the wall there and they jump down one by one and um the operative wall will give some sort of speech uh, something is very brief saying something like um floriet etona et hic nostra um Luda Morales. I probably got that wrong. Mangled my Latin. Anyway, we're coming up to this. Is this is um, good calx here? As in, remember chalk again. The, the lines they're painted on, but they would have been chalk long ago. Um, and so that the bully starts there. So the scrum starts under the ladder in the middle. That's at the halfway line. You try and push your way up, and the ball can come out. There are two walls, as in players from each side who are closest to the wall. And then there are two seconds, which are slightly further out from the wall, and two thirds are slightly further out from the wall. Again. And I can't remember what else there is. Is there? There's a, there's a lines, uh, as in he's closer to the line, trying to stop the ball going out. And there's a fly who's well back, kind of equivalent of a goalkeeper. But what you want to do is um, you want to get beyond calx, as in beyond here. And then you want to get the ball and push it a little bit off the ground with one foot and then touch it with one hand and then shout, got it. And then the umpire will make you go back and have a look. Have you really got it? Is that a shy? If so, you've got a shy, that's one point. And then having got that shy, um, then the others, then the opposing team has to get out of the furrow as they have to go at least five meters to the side. Then they have to go back and you pick up the ball. I think you've got one lob to throw it at that door. And that door is the, that door is the, um, is the goal and a goal is worth I think it's six points something like that they're very very rare and then um, yeah you see it's called good counts because the opposing team might not let uh, might not allow you to actually touch against the wall so you might be able to touch against this wall there's there's more of a scoring area I've never seen it come anywhere near here but I haven't watched a match in many many years they tend to play in the winter when the ground is all chewed up and muddy at the moment you know it's been baked hard It'd be too painful if you fall so it's exhausting because it's like a scrum non-stop for an hour well there is a half time because in a, in a rugby match how long does a scrum last typically like 30 seconds and that's why you have two walls because one of them will push till his strength has run out and exchange with the other guy will take over until he He's just too weary and they keep swapping around and two seconds and two thirds and two fourths and so on um, so that is how the war game uh, goes so uh, Harold Macmillan um, when was he born 1894 and he famously played if I got it right in the um, 1909 match and a goal was scored then on St Andrew's Day and no goals been scored at St Andrew's Day ever since for 111 years now there are several other matches a year and a year and there have been goals scored in other matches just not the St Andrew's Day match and um, famously, one boy, um, he drowned in the mud about 100 years ago. So people are saying there are as many fatalities as there are goals. Now, you may see these little arches at ground level, little grass growing near them, but they're filled in with concrete now, but they weren't filled in with concrete long ago. And some boy got his head stuck under there and drowned in the mud, because as you can imagine, um, it's incredibly uh, wet and muddy um, come winter, because it rains so much here in the British Isles. And if you think you are asphyxiating or whatever, or some uncomfortable position about to, to, to break your spine, you meant to shout air. Trouble is, if you're suffocating, it's difficult to get your words out. And hearing that, all the other boys are meant to echo that air, air, air. They all say air. So you all get it. The umpire says, stop the game, get out. So you get out of this dangerous position. Then you're told not to shout ow, because ow can be too easily mistaken for air. So you're allowed to grind your knuckles in somebody's face, but striking people is not permitted. So. That's just a little bit about the, the war game. I've only played a few times. I've not played in any high um, level match. Uh, in some practice game, I scored a shy, which I, I was astonished that I managed to do that because I'm an absolute 10th rate sportsman. It's my first ever war game match. I thought, oh my God, finally I found a sport at which I'm a natural. And the late redoubtable Roddy Foreman taught me. He was captain of school. What a lovely chap. So he was here as a schoolboy. He was a king scholar. He went away to, I don't remember which university, it was in the Royal Navy and National Service, came back here as a maths beak and was a housemaster and, you know, an absolute gent, a real diamond geezer. And I found out that he died not long ago, so I'm very sad about that. He's a lovely man. And so I miss him very sorely. Um, and he's the one who taught me the war game. A very short man, a very able um, war game player. He used to teach complete dolts like me, um, football and things like that. So, yeah, well... I should cry for him really, but I just can't bring myself to weep. So there we are. It's just so fragrant, so heavenly a day like this. You're seeing the place in its fullest glory. And you can see the uh, the petals dropping off this, this uh, tree. Isn't it unutterably exquisite? Well, that is just a little bit about the wall game, which is played by this wall at Eton. So people say it looks like half the school are playing. Well, that's because they've obviously zoomed in on the scrum. 
So there are only 10 players on each side. There's an 11th man who simply stands by. He wears the shirt, he wears ordinary school uniform trousers, and he, he takes notes and he reads some speech at the end, at the, the dinner afterwards. Or what do, what do they say um, in, in college? They have some lunch afterwards and they say, um, uh, in PM memoriam, JKS, uh, as in, in dutiful memory of JKS, JK Stephen. Um, who was a, who was here at Eton in the 1880s? Of one of the suspects of being Jack the Ripper in 1888, but for various reasons we know it wasn't J.K. Stephen because he was a Cambridge Don at the time, and he was recorded as lecturing at eight o'clock in the morning, the night after the murders were committed, and it's absolutely impossible for him to have murdered someone at the East End of London and gone up to Cambridge within a few hours. People look into the railway timetables, and it was a physical impossibility. Cars had been invented like two years earlier, and even on a horse you weren't going to be able to do that. Um, but that's J.K. Stephen, who was um, a, a man of incredible physical strength and presence, and he single-handedly saved College Wall from disaster one time, was actually fixated with eating a bit of a boar, was coming back and staying with a master in college. That's his old housemaster for three days at a time, taking the most obsessive interest in the pettiest affairs of the school, but uh, was an academic supernova and later served as the um, tutor to Prince Eddie, that's to say Queen Victoria's grandson. He was due to inherit the throne in time, but he died of pneumonia aged 28. Um, and uh, J.K. Stephen died in his late 30s as well of mania and other ailment, ailments at St. Andrew's Hospital. I also thought that was a curious irony given that the crucial game in the war game was um, the St. Andrew's Day match and he died in St. Andrew's Hospital in Northampton. Right, that's enough from me. Toodaloo.